Good day, Grade Tours. Welcome to this next lesson. Um, in this lesson, like I said to you on the on last week, I'm actually going to be um, looking specifically at specific types of exam questions. In this case, I'm looking at calculus exam revision, and we'll see how far we go with it. Um, I have to warn you that I do actually have quite a bad cold, so I might pause intermittently to um, to make the microphone silent so that I can blow my nose. I apologize for that, but there's not much I can do about it. Okay, so let's get through it. It says calculus, let's get started. So your calculus goes from everything from your first principles through to finding equations for graphs to local max and min. So let's go have a look at this. The first thing it says is determine f dash of x from first principles. So remember that f dash of x equals the limit as h tends to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all of h. That there is the first principle law or rule, okay? So the first thing that we're going to do before we start working out the first principles is we're going to find f of x plus h. So f of x plus h basically says that wherever we see an x, we have to do what? We have to replace it with an x plus h. So it becomes 3x plus h squared minus 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply that out so that we don't have to do it in this problem here. So it becomes 3x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 2, which becomes 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared minus 2. Right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use our first principle law and we're going to solve for this. So let's do it. f dash of x equals the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h, which is all of this. So it's 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared minus 2 minus 3x squared minus 2 all over h. It's a minus, by the way. Okay, please remember to put your brackets here because if you don't, then you're going to end up with a bad sum. Okay, you're going to end up not being able to cancel things you need to cancel. So please remember your brackets. Okay, so it becomes a limit as h tends to 0 of 3x squared, and all we're going to do in this step is get rid of these brackets. So 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared minus 2 minus 3x squared plus 2 all of h. Okay, and do you see we can now cancel? 3x squared cancels with minus 3x squared, and minus 2 cancels with plus 2. So we get the limit as h tends to 0 of 6xh plus 3h squared all over h. Do you agree we can take out a common factor of 3h? So we left with the limit as h tends to 0 of 3h and then what we got? 2x plus 3 3, uh -oh. no 3 in that, we've taken it out, plus h all over h, the h is cancelled, so what are we left with? We've got, and I'm sorry but I'm writing over here, it's the limit as h tends to 0 of 3 times by 2x plus h, and now we apply this limit is h tends to 0 and what we're saying is what does this sum become as we get closer and closer to h being 0 and what happens is do you agree that we can basically replace 0 wherever we see an h and we end up with 3 times by 2x which is just 6x and that is our final answer so there we go so please guys, very important, your brackets over here and don't drop your limit as h tends to zero. I know so many students who know exactly how to do first principles, derivative on first principles, but they did not, not 
remember to not drop this until the last line and they get all their marks gone because they have not followed procedure. Please remember this. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to use the rule. And the rule says f of x is equal to ax to the n, then f dashed of x is equal to n a x to the n minus 1. So what you do is you take the whatever that number is at the top, you bring it to the front and you multiply it and then you subtract 1. So that's the rule and we're going to use that rule and we're going to apply it to this problem where it says determine dy by dx if y is equal to 2x minus 4 over x minus x over 5. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is change the color of my pen and I'm going to go y is equal to 2x to negative 4 minus, and then to make this easier for myself, I'm going to go 1 fifth times by x, just to make it a little bit easier, okay? Now, to find dy by dx, what do I need to do? I need to obey the rule, which is we take 2, we take the minus 4 and take the front, so it becomes a negative 4, x to the minus 4 minus 1, minus a fifth, and this x actually goes away. And the reason is, is because it's applied one year. So if we take that to the front, we multiply it by one, then it becomes x to the one minus one. Okay, I'll explain what happens now in the next line. So two times negative four is negative eight, x to the negative five, minus one fifth, x to the 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, and anything to 0 is 1, so it just goes away. So that's your answer. So your final answer is minus 8, x to the negative 5, or minus 1 fifth. Okay, so they may say to you that they want it in positive exponents, in which case you need to write minus 8 over x to the 5 minus a fifth. And now I have to pause to blow my notes, my apologies. Right, I'm back. Okay, let's do the next question. Okay, so this, like I said, all these questions come out of old exam paper questions. Um, and this is one of them. And this is a typical question in the calculus section. It says they're given you f of x is equal to x cubed minus 4x squared minus 11x plus 30. So this is obviously a cubic graph. And it says use the fact that f of 2 equals 0 to write down a factor of f of x. What they're saying is that if we substitute x equal to 2 into this, then the whole thing equals 0, which means that x equals 2 solves this. Therefore, x minus 2 is a factor. So they're kind of helping you because the next thing they want us to do is to factorize because they say calculate the coordinates of the x-intercepts. So the only way we can work out the coordinates of the x-intercepts is to factorize this. So we're going to be using this x minus 2 to factorize the rest of this. So we've got x cubed minus 4x squared minus 11x plus 30 is equal to x minus 2. Then the way it works is this first into first. So we've got x into x cubed gives you x squared. In other words, x cubed divided by x gives you x squared. And then last into last, so 30 divided by minus 2 is minus 15. And then This multiplied by this gives you minus 2x squared. And that multiplied by this gives you kx squared. And all together, it has to equal minus 4x squared. So I'd like to replace the middle term with a kx so that I can see what I'm supposed to be getting. So you've got minus 2x squared added to something, added with something gives you minus 4x squared. So obviously this k has to be 
minus 2. If I replace this with a minus 2, I get minus 2x squared, minus 2x squared, which gives me minus 4x. So, I can replace this as minus 2x. Okay, I'm almost finished. I now need to factorize this last bracket because so far that's pretty, but it doesn't give me the coordinates of the x-intercept. So let us get the coordinates of the x-intercepts. We still have x minus 2, that's one of them, but now we need to factorize this bracket. So the factors of x are x and x, that's pretty easy. The factors of 15, we know that one of the brackets has to be a negative and the other one has to be a positive and they have to add up to 2 or minus 2 and they have to multiply to be 15. So your factors of 15 are 1 and 15 and 5 and 3. So obviously it has to be minus 5 and plus 3. How do I get that? Well, my factors of x and x are 1 and 1. If my factors are 5, 15 or 5 and 3, we know that 1 times 5 is 5, 1 times 3 is 3. How do I get a minus 2? This has to be a minus and that has to be a plus. Then I get minus 5 plus 3 which gives me minus 2. So the minus has to be in front of the 5 and the plus has to be in front of the 3. Okay, so therefore we've got x minus 2, x minus 5, x plus 3. Okay, so those are my factors. And that is the coordinates of the x-intercepts of f. Now they've asked the coordinates of the stationary point. Okay, sorry, I have not finished. I'm being very bad. It says calculate the coordinates of the x-intercepts. I have just factorized this. I haven't actually calculated the coordinates and I haven't told you what they are. So the coordinates are going to be 2, 0. It's going to be 5, 0. And obviously it's going to be minus 3, 0. Because if we let that equal to 0, then x would have to equal to 2. If we let this equal to 0, x has to equal to 5. And if we let this whole thing equal to 0, x has to equal to minus 3. So therefore the coordinates are 2, 0, 5, 0, and minus 3, 0. Okay, awesome. Now it says calculate the coordinates of the stationary points. So guys, what do we have to do to get stationary points? We obviously have to differentiate because the derivative gives us the equation for the gradient and its stationary points are f dashed of x equals zero because they're turning points and the gradient at the turning points is zero. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is differentiate this. So we go f dashed of x equals, just a second, Okay, so we're looking to derive this thing. So what do we do? We've got x cubed, to take 3 to the front. So it's 3x squared minus 2 times 4 is 8x minus 11. So that's your first derivative, f dash of x. But now to find the stationary points, what does this gradient have to be? It has to equal 0. So therefore we're going to say 3x squared minus 8x minus 11 equals 0, and we have to factorize this. I'm sorry, just a second. Right, sorry about that. 
So therefore, we have to look at the factors of three. The factors of three are three and one, and the factors of 11 are 11 and one, obviously, because do you agree they're both prime numbers? But when we add them, we have to get to minus eight. So three plus one is going to give you, three times plus one is positive three, and 1 times negative 11 is minus 11, which gives you negative 8. So therefore, the brackets for this are 3x minus 11, x plus 1 equals 0. Therefore, x is going to equal 11 over 3, or x equals negative 1. Okay, so these are the x coordinates of the stationary points. The x coordinates of the stationary points are 11 over 3 uh, or minus 1 and something, okay? Now we need to find the y values. So what do we do? Whenever you want to find the y values, you always substitute back into the original. So we're going to substitute these numbers back into the original. So let's do minus one first. Okay, so we've got minus one cubed, minus four times minus one squared, minus 11 times minus one, plus 30. Okay, so minus one cubed is just minus one. Minus one squared is one, times one negative four is negative four. Minus times a minus is a plus, so it's plus 11 plus 30. So that's going to be 41 minus 1 is 40, minus 4 is 36. So this is minus 1, 36. And then we have to substitute 11 over 3 in. And I'm running out of space, so I'm just going to erase quickly. Okay, so I'm substituting into this original. So wherever I see, I see an x, I'm going to put 11 over 3. So we've got 11 over 3 cubed minus 4 times 11 over 3 squared minus 11 times 11 over 3 plus 30. And now we need to use our calculator. So let's get it out and move it over. So let's get started. So we've got, uh, we need a bracket before we do that. So let's just clear bracket. And then 11 over three bracket to the power of, oh no, let's try again. Delete, delete, um, power of three. Okay, minus four times by a bracket and it's 11 over 3 close bracket squared minus 11 multiplied by 11 over 3 close bracket plus 30 equals minus 400 over 27, which just to give us an idea is minus 14.81. So it's minus 400 over 27. So it's minus 400 over 27. So I'm gonna write here minus 400 over 27. But what I do wanna convert that to is minus 14.81. There's a reason for it. Okay, so now, we have to sketch the graph and it says show all the intercepts with the axes and the turning points clearly. Okay, so obviously they've said on our answer books, there's no nice graph paper, so we just have to go on with it. You guys, when you're doing this in the exams or even just in class tests or even for yourselves, you should be using a ruler and a pencil and obviously an eraser. So we know it goes through positive 30. We know it cuts at x equals 2, that's 2, it cuts at 5, and it cuts at minus 
3. We also know it turns at minus 136. <clears throat> minus 136. Okay, and at 11 over 3. Now, 11 over 3 is 3 and 2 thirds, so it's somewhere over there. And minus 14, about over there. So, therefore, this graph does this more or less. It goes like this, and then it does this. And this is why you use a pencil and an eraser, so you can make it look pretty. And then this would be, the point would be minus 136, and this point would be 11 over 3 minus 400 over 27. There you go. So that's more or less what your graph would look like. Um, unfortunately, we're not, yeah, I thought so. Um, let's just make that shorter, shall we? So let's do, sure. Okay, there we go. That's better. Okay, now it says, for which values of x is f dash of x smaller than zero? Okay, so let's talk about this. What is f dash of x? f dash of x is the gradient. Right, it's the equation for the gradient. So they want to know for which values of x will the gradient be smaller than zero? So which gradient value of x will the slope be negative? And do you agree the slope is negative from here to here? Okay, from here the slope is positive and here the slope is positive. So therefore, we can say that it is negative from uh, between x is smaller than 11 over 3 and greater than negative 1. There is another way to work it out if you really want to. Um, we worked out the formula for the first derivative, which was f dashed of x was equal to 3x minus 8x, 3x, sorry, squared, minus 8x minus 11. Do you remember that? And we factorized it to become 3x what is it? Minus 11x plus 1. So we worked out that this would look like this. It would be a happy graph going through and this would be negative 1 and this would be 11 over 3. So that is the equation for the first derivative. So if you can't realize or don't realize that this sloping up to the left is the negative and f dash of x is the equation for the gradient, then you can use the information you've already learned, I mean, or worked out, that f dash of x is 3x squared minus 8x plus 11, minus 11. Then use that to find out when this is equal to smaller than zero, which would obviously be between minus 1 and 11 over 3. Okay, and I need to blow my nose again, sorry. Right, great terms, I'm back. Sorry about that. Right, now, new questions from a different exam paper. It says calculate the derivative of the following. And these are a little bit more complex. You got x squared multiplied by one minus one over x. So you guys don't know the chain rule. You haven't been taught it yet in grade 12 maths. So we need to multiply that bracket before we can differentiate. So we can say therefore that this is x squared, one minus one over x, okay, equals, we multiply the bracket, becomes x squared minus x squared over x, which is just x squared minus x, which then makes it very easy because then f dashed of x, if this was f of x, is equal to 2x minus one. So something that looks quite complicated actually can be very easy. Now let's look at this horrible thing. Okay, so let's try it. We've got h of x is equal to the cube root of x squared minus 3x all divided by the square root of x. Okay, so again, we have to make this all 
very neat and with everything with positive exponents before we can actually solve this. So let's first of all change these into exponents. So we've got equals x to the 2 over 3 minus 3x and this is all divided by x to the half. Okay which is the same as saying x to the 2 over 3 minus 3x all multiplied by x to the negative a half and then we have to multiply it out we actually do so what we're going to have to do is go okay well that's x to the 2 over 3 minus a half means you add them or subtract it in this case so it's 2 over 3 minus a half minus 3x 1 minus a half okay so yeah we've got a common denominator of six so it's common denominator six three goes into six twice two times two is four minus two goes into six three times times by one is three minus three x to the a half which is x to the one six minus three x to the half so that is h of x this is just h to x. Now we can differentiate. So we can say h dashed of x is equal to 1 6 x to the 1 6 minus 1 minus 3 times by a half x to the negative a half, which is 1 6 x to the minus 5 over 6 minus 3 over 2 x to the negative a half. There you go. And that is the derivative of that horrible thing there. Okay, let's do another example. Okay, so this time they give you the graph and we you're going to use information from the graph as well as other information and we're going to find values. So let's see what it tells us. It tells us that the graph represents functions f and g where f of x is ax cubed minus cx minus 2. So this is obviously f, and then they've labeled it. And g of x is equal to x minus 2, so that's a straight line. a uh, and d are intercepts, where d is minus 1, 0. And the graphs at f and g cross at a and c. Okay, we'll be. To determine the coordinates of a. Okay, well, we obviously can't use this equation, f of x equals ax cubed plus cx minus cx minus 2 for that, but we can use the equation for the straight line, which is just x minus 2 is equal to y to find that value. So what we do is we let y equal 0, because y is 0 all the way along this line. So therefore, we can say, well, if y equals 0, we've got 0 equals x minus 2. Therefore, x equals 2. Therefore, the coordinates of a are 2, 0. 2, 0. There we go. Now it says, show by calculation that little a is 1 and c is 3. Okay, so what do we know? We know that f of x is equal to some random uh, front letter, let's call it A. Then we've got X minus 1, or actually it's plus 1, X plus 1, X minus 2. In other words, it's got three X cuts, okay? It's actually got two equal ones right here, X plus 1 and X plus 1, and a third one at X minus 2. That's how we get to the X cubed, okay? So what we need to do is we need to multiply this out to find out what we think the a and c is, okay? So let's do that. We've got a, this comes as x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now we need to multiply it with x minus 2. So we've got a, x times x squared is x cubed. x squared times minus 2 is minus 2x squared. Then we've got plus 2x times x is plus 2x squared. Plus 2x times minus 2 is minus 4x. And then we go plus 1 times x is plus x. Plus 1 times minus 2 is minus 2. So therefore we've got a x cubed 
minus 2x plus 2x cancels, minus 4x plus 1 is minus 3x, minus 2. And do you see that the last term is minus 2? And on the equation they gave us, it was also minus 2. Therefore, in this case, a is equal to 1. Therefore, we can say that f of x is equal to x cubed minus 3x minus 2, and it's pretty obvious that a equals 1 and c is equal to 3. Ta-da! Right, now it says determine the coordinates of b, the turning point. Okay, so again, I'm sorry, I need to blow my nose. Just hang on. Right, grade 12. So we need to find the coordinates of B, which is a turning point. And I hope while I was away, you guys were working out or realizing that in order to find the coordinates of the turning point of B, I mean, according to B, you need to find the first derivative and let it equal zero. So f of x is equal to x cubed minus 3x minus 2. So f dashed of x is equal to 3x squared minus 3. And we're going to let this equal 0. So if we let that equal to 0, we've got 3x squared minus 3 equals 0. We can take out a common factor of 3. We're left with x squared minus 1 equals 0. Then do you agree that x equals 1 or x is equal to minus 1? Now we've already got that x equals minus 1. Ta ching So therefore we know that this 1 is correct. Now we need to find the y value. And what do we do? To find the y value, you have to substitute back into the original. Always have to substitute back into the original. So let's just erase this and get this out of the way. And then we can continue working. Okay, so let's substitute in. We've got f, uh, what is this, 1? is going to be 1 cubed minus 3 times our 1 minus 2, which is 1 minus 3 minus 2, which is minus 4. So therefore, this value here is minus 4. So there we go. We found the coordinates of B, the turning point of F. Now it says determine the X coordinate of the point of inflection. Okay, so the point of inflection is when the second derivative equals zero. We have just found the equation for the first derivative. The first derivative is given as minus 3x squared minus 3. Now we need to find the second derivative. So we go f double dash of x is equal to minus 6x. That's it, because this become a 1 and this goes away. And when that equals zero, obviously x equals zero. So the point of inflection, x coordinate of this point of inflection is x equals zero. And if you look at the graph, that makes sense because if you look here, you can see that it actually changes from here to here. So it's actually going through a little bit of a change there. So that makes sense. Now it says write down the values of k for which f of x equals k will have only one root. Okay, in order for this to have one root, do you agree we need to move this graph down? Which means we need for this to, this minus two be, to be moved down, okay? So we want to know what do we need to do to move this down? So it says for which values of k so we'd have to say 
we want, I'm going to let me write this down, we want x cubed minus 3x minus 2 equals k. So what do we want to do? We want to move it down. So therefore, k has to be, we want, if we wanted to move this down, k has to be a plus 1, okay, or it has to be greater than 0. If k is greater than zero, then when you take it to the other side, it becomes a minus, which means we are moving the graph down. So k, if k is greater than zero, then the whole of this graph is going to move down. So we'll only have one root, but k is greater than zero. Now it said write down the values of x, which f dash of x is smaller than naught. Well, again, we're looking for the gradient to be negative, so it's from here to here. So it's going to be x is smaller than 1 and greater than minus 1. Okay, grade 12, so I'm actually going to call it today because I'm banged up and I need to blow my nose again. Please, please come back tomorrow. We'll carry on doing some more calculus. We've got quite a few more calculus questions I want to do with you. Um, and I promise you get medication to dry my nose up. Okay, have a great day.